Well, the KO3 is finally here. May 1st, and BF Goodrich announced the official go live of the BF Goodrich KO3. Now, obviously this is the redesign of the KO2. It's been a very highly anticipated tire that was supposed to be out sometime last year, uh, and it is only just now coming out. But that's only kind of true. Even though today is the official launch day for the KO3, obviously two sizes have been available for about a year. Those were OEM tires that were shipping on some Chevy trucks, a couple different trucks out there. This is the wider public release of the tire, but here's good news and bad news. They're doing a phased rollout on this tire. And by the way, I have a pretty good idea why they're doing that. We'll talk about that in a second. It's gonna be actually a little bit limited right out of the gate. For the month of May, I'm gonna throw a chart up here. This is information directly emailed to me from BFG, okay? They said for May, they're going to have 13 sizes available. And then they list them here in this chart. For August, they list 17 sizes that are gonna be available. Uh, then we go to October, all the way out to October this year, there's five additional sizes coming. Additional to what you see here, they're going to roll out over 100 sizes of this tire. But if your size is not listed on this sheet, I would say don't hold your breath because after October, uh, where those five sizes that are on the chart are released, they're announcing 52 more sizes will be released over the course of 2025, and then an additional 19 sizes will be released in 2026. So this is a very phased rollout of over 100 different sizes that are going to be coming out over the period of two and a half years. Now, a lot of people would go, why? I mean, that seems insane. That is a very, very long rollout for a tire. I mean, one thing is the KO2, uh, the predecessor of the KO3 just simply came in a lot of different sizes, a lot more sizes than a lot of other tires have. So that's one reason why the rollout is so long. One of the other reasons is if you paid attention to this tire and you compare the KO3 to the KO2, this tire is manufactured completely different than the KO2. It has a totally different compound, and then the machines that they use to make this tire are different than the machines they made to make that one. One of the easiest ways that you can tell is this tire has all these little dimples on the tread. You'll see these little bumps. Those are not there for traction. A lot of older, not older tires, a lot of tires that you see out there have those little hairs that come off of them when they're brand new and you just drive and it wears them off. Those little hairs are from little vents that are in the molding machine. This one still has some little hairs in a couple key spots where it had vents. But this other new dimpled design means that they're using a ventless or a partially ventless machine. It manufactures tires it's a completely different style of mold. It's a much more expensive type of mold. I don't know if they switched to it because they needed to to do the compound that they're doing, but BFG has always had fairly advanced manufacturing of tires compared to their competition. So they went to the Ventless, which is a huge expense to change over your manufacturing process to. I, I think they're doing that to continue the competition and, and to try to keep an edge on some of the competition that has manufacturing that is older. So this, this is a pretty advanced tire. Okay, so now let's talk the differences between the KO2 and the KO3 and what performance improvements you can expect out of this tire. Now, luckily we already made the most watched KO3 review on the entire internet right now. Um, it's also the most detailed review of this tire. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in the highlights of that that has only the facts and just the information. I will take out all the fluff, so it'll just be a condensed version and education on this tire. Please watch that and enjoy. It covers just about every nerdy thing that you could think of on this tire. At first glance, these tires look pretty similar, but if you look closely, you're gonna to start to recognize a ton of changes. The KO2 is nine years old and the tire designers at BFG have definitely decided to update the KO3 with almost a decade's worth of new innovations. 
Okay, let's talk tread. A whole lot of changes happened here and quite a few of them are pretty important. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got the KO2 on this side. We have the KO3 on this side. One of the biggest changes you're gonna see down the middle of the tire is these little center lugs that, I don't know, kind of look like a caterpillar or something, uh, have now been replaced by these S-shaped lugs. Now these S-shaped lugs are showing up on all kinds of AT tires right now. They're on the General Grabber ATX, they're on the Falcon Wild Peak, uh, they're even on, what's the other one? Oh, the Toyo AT3 popularized this. I'm, I'm kind of curious if they're the ones that did it first. Probably not. Anyhow, these are showing up everywhere. The reason the S is such a popular design is it gives you biting edges that face every single different direction and offers great grip. Now, the other thing that you're gonna notice is there's a lot bigger gaps on the old uh, KO2. In fact, in some of the places, the gaps were so big, they gave us these big triangular rock ejectors uh, along with the normal striped rock ejectors. On the new tire, you're gonna see there is no void in the pattern that's big enough to even fit one of those big triangular rock ejectors. So they just have the normal ones. What that means is that means the middle of this tire is less voided, so it has smaller gaps. Uh, what that means, a couple things. It means more rubber is on the road at all times. That helps you with how fast the tire wears down. Okay, so another question that's gonna come up a bunch is with a tighter pattern on the center of the KO3, how is that going to affect mud performance? The KO2 was not really known for being a great mud performer. Now, a lot of people give it a really bad rap for that, and that's a little unfair because it is an all-terrain tire and almost no all-terrain tires are really good in the mud. They aren't really made to be good on the mud. However, this one in particular, with the way that the pattern was so tightly interlocking into each other, it really didn't allow mud to slide out at all. When a tire's spinning really, really fast on the side, you want mud to be flying out. But the problem with this one is mud would get stuck in really for the most part, wouldn't come out at all. So the weird thing is, while this one has a little bit bigger, you know, spots in it, this one is less interlocking. So the idea behind the tread on this is that it appears that they want the less interlocking ability of it to clear out mud a little better. We're gonna have to test that a lot. Mud is hard to test because as you guys know, mud from one location to another can be very different. If it has a lot of sand in it versus a lot of clay in it. Um, so when somebody just makes a blanket statement and says something's terrible in all mud, it's really hard to test. You really need to test in a lot of things. I'm gonna be taking them out in this spring and running them in the mud in the Waihees that almost no tire is good at. So that's a great extreme test to see how they do. Uh, but yeah, so the idea behind this one, smaller grooves, but not as interlocked as this. So there's a potential for it to still possibly work in mud. That's the one area where I say there's a little question mark of whether it's actually gonna get substantially better, stay the same, or possibly be a tiny bit worse. In addition to that, if we move to the outside, the, the farthest outer lugs, you're gonna see it's an alternating pattern, right? We have this short lug that's still a little bit similar to this one. Um, this one has better siping, we'll get into siping in a minute. Uh, but if you look at this lug, the new one is a lot different. First of all, it extends farther into the middle of the tire. Um, and one of the things that that helps is when you're driving and you turn onto the corner of your tire, and then you go back to being straight back onto the middle of your tire, this is gonna help with your transition from one to the other. So A, again, it's gonna help with tire wear, but it's also gonna help with cornering. So they've very much decided to change the outer lugs of the tire. One other complaint that you saw on the KO2 is people said that some of these lugs were prone to chipping or ripping. Well, one of those lugs is this one right here. You'll see it's every other one is shaped like that. Now, the problem with this lug right here is the way that they did the siping. When you have full depth siping, look how skinny from here, from this sipe to the edges. This is a, this is a, piece that if just this piece gets snagged on a rock, it's not very sturdy. If you look at the new replacement lugs for the same weakness where you had this thin point, everything's a lot thicker. So they've reinforced the lugs by changing the siping, making this outer lug stronger. Okay, finally, probably one of the most important things, water pathing. Uh, when you have a tire that has this big of a contact patch as the KO2 did, 
Usually that means it's great in dry surfaces and rock, but that means many times it's not so great in water. And in this case, this one wasn't. It doesn't have great water pathing. There's all kinds of little voids in here where water can very easily get trapped when you're driving through a thick puddle and it can't escape outside very easily. And water doesn't really compress. So if it's not gonna compress, it's going to take away your traction. You're gonna hydroplane. If you look at what excuses they did have for water pathing were these things that start here and go out, they only cover, I don't know, not even a quarter of the tire. So on the new one with water pathing, they have water paths that start all the way two thirds across the tire and go all the way out. And then they have the same thing happening going down in a downward direction. So you have way, way better water, water paths. So instead of the water getting trapped here, it's going to be squirting out to the sides. So water pathing has greatly improved. One of the biggest complaints about the KO2 was its performance on very wet roads. So I think that the water pathing is much improved. We're also going to talk siping in a second and siping is also a lot improved. Okay, if you're a tire nerd, siping is something you get very excited about. So siping are the little lines on tires. It was actually invented by a guy named John Sipe in the 1920s, and he didn't work for tires at all. He actually worked at a butcher house and was slipping around on the floor a lot. So he cut slipes or slits into the bottom of his shoes to see if it would give him better traction, and it worked. Sipes have come a long way. We used to have Standard sipes were cut about halfway into a lug. Those aren't full depth. Once a tire ages and you use up half of your tread and you want to use the other half, you have terrible traction. So if sipes aren't full depth, they're kind of a joke in my opinion. Who, who wants to drive around only half of a life of a tire? You'd be surprised how many tires out there still don't have full depth sipes. So that's worth looking into if you're exploring tires. Secondly, they've come out with what's called 3D sipes. Now, the KO2, the original KO2, had 3D sipes, but remember, this tire's nine years old, so even 3D sipes have come away since then. Immediately, you're gonna recognize that this tire has more sipes than the KO2. The other thing is, these have 3D sipes. What that means is down, if you get a, like a little magnifying glass and you look down inside that crack, there are interlocking edges. They almost look like little bubbles, like the shape of like a BB that bumps out on this side and sticks into the side on that side. And they interlock with each other. What happens is when this lug gets compressed and gets weight on it, they lock into each other, strengthening this lug so it will operate as one single unit. Well, they just got better and better. So the way that these interlock with each other is better and better. You're gonna notice, see how a lot of these ones were just mostly straight and you have these little angles. Well, these ones have a little bit more drastic angles. That helps this push into that and it helps lock this lug together to keep it strong. Um, also, these little zigzag ones do the same thing. So it helps you maintain the integrity of, this, of the larger lug while achieving the purpose of additional grip on ice and water. Most of these lugs have about 25% more siping on them. Some of them have more like 30% more siping. When a tire has about 30% more siping, uh, and this one wasn't known for being the best in the water, you'd be amazed about a difference. If you start comparing this to the Falcon Wild Peak, which in a lot of ways could be almost measured as the standard in ATs for wet and icy road conditions, this actually appears to have more siping than the AT3W does. So I am very excited about the, the water and the ice traction that this tire is going to offer with all this new siping and new edges. There's not a lot of surprises here. The BF Goodrich KO2, uh, is, even with it being nine years old, is still widely considered the strongest AT tire on the market. The internal layering that it has is, is basically second to none. There's a few tires out there that have copied it, but nobody's really making a stronger all-terrain tire than the KO2. Now, we're not talking tread and all that stuff. We're talking about the internal layering, like the three plies of that it has on the inside of it, the, the two layers of steel cord. They mirrored, as far as we can tell, they've mirrored the internal construction with the KO3. They're bringing that same strength that they had on the KO2 over to the KO3. To put it in perspective, guys, this is a load C range tire, and it has three ply sidewalls. 
in a lot of the competition out there, even like the General Grabber ATX that I have on my truck, which is a load range E, it only has a two ply sidewall. So they just are delivering a much stronger tire than most of the brands. The other thing that is worth mentioning, the KO2, because of how strong it is built, it's not the most comfortable tire to drive. Some people will drive it and compare it to, for example, the General Grabber ATX, and they'll go, hey, the ATX feels a lot nicer. And what you're usually talking about when you're talking about that feel is you're talking about how much feedback the tire gives you from the bumps in the road through your steering system. Well, the KO2 is squarely in the middle of the pack in that category. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Um, considering that it's the strongest tire and what they have to do to these things to make them that strong, I'm still impressed that it somehow measures in the middle of the pack for comfort. But yeah, it's not the most comfortable tire to drive. And the KO3, I think, is going to be similar. The KO3 might be a tiny bit more comfortable, though, and that will have to do with the compound that it is actually made out of and that the fact that the new compound should be able to absorb vibrations a little better. So we'll talk compounds next. So something interesting happens when you freeze a tire. Both of these tires, I live in Idaho, we just had a huge blizzard. It's been freezing conditions here. Left these outside and we wanted to test how the rubber performed when it was cold. And one thing that we noticed right away is that the new tread on the new KO3 was still a little bit better as far as being more pliable when the tire is cold. Now this has a lot to do with how the tire performs on ice and snow. If you have all these little edges and, and all this stuff on your tire to perform and grab the road, yet then when you freeze the tire, it becomes completely rigid and it's basically like ice on ice. It doesn't perform very well. The new tire, remains more pliable once it's frozen. What that means is it probably means that it has a high silica content. This is where everybody is going right now. All the new tires that have come out on the market, they're upping the content of silica in the tire. And the reason is silica is kind of this magical component that essentially allows your tire to stay more pliable when it's cold, yet doesn't wear down really quickly. It used to be what we did was we softened the rubber to try to make it softer rubber, but then your tire doesn't last as long. So these have a 50,000 mile warranty. If they wanted to make them softer to perform in ice, but then all of a sudden they'd only get a 40,000 you know, mile warranty, probably nobody would buy them. So everyone has turned to silica as kind of the answer to this. Sure, there's many other compounds that are getting used and changed and polymers and all kinds of crazy stuff in tire science, but silica is one of the big things that change. The Falcon AT3 has an extremely high silica content. It does make it softer, but it still remains a fairly strong tread. There are a lot of other rumored changes to the compound, but compounds for tires companies is like their secret sauce. It's like the KFC, you know, chicken recipe. They don't share them. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is rumored to be changed with the resins on this. There's also a thing called a butadine rubber. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but essentially it's a way that they're modifying tires to try to help with heat disbursement and to manage temperatures better. These are all things they're doing to be able to supply what in this case seems to be a little bit of a softer tire, yet still get the same mileage out of it. When it comes to compounds, it's really hard to comment too much other than like the freeze test and being able to see that this one is still more pliable. Other than that, the only other way to truly test it is to just put 50,000 miles on one of these sets of tires and be able to report back to you. A couple things that I kind of hope about this tire. A, when they change the compound, what I'm hoping is that means the manufacturing process for these tires can now be a little bit more reliable. In the past with the KO2, we had a decent amount of trouble with balancing these tires where there was some inconsistency in the actual manufacturing process. So I'm excited to see if they've worked those bugs out with the new compound and changes. Uh, I'm also excited to see if they will bring back the white letters you always had white letters as an option on one side of the tire and black on the other. I know a lot of people like them all black. I personally like the retro look of having the white letters facing out. And I have a lot of old cars, like old Land Cruisers and things like that that I work on that I just think it looks great on. So I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that they bring the black letters back because they don't, I mean the white letters back because they, they don't have them on this one right now. 
Um, another thing is I hope that they increase the amount of sizes that they support. I'd like to see all-terrain tires all the way up to 40s. Uh, one thing is not a lot of people make AT tires that big because once you get into those larger sizes, everybody just goes to mutters. But more and more people that are doing racing and different things like that that are valuing different types of traction are starting to realize that they like running some of these stronger all-terrains in those circumstances. So I'd like to see some bigger tire options out there for us, especially for winter snow wheeling. I'd love to put some 13 and a half inch wide 40s on the Land Cruiser and uh, air it down really, really low and go try to drive in some real deep snow. I am curious what you guys are gonna do after looking at the list. Did they make your size? And if they didn't make your size, what are you gonna do? Are you going to hold out until your size gets released or if, if they don't have, they simply don't have it available, um, is there a different tire that you're looking at that you're gonna buy instead? Let me know in the comments. Uh, we'll be doing another live from the shop coming up where we can talk tires and talk about the KO3 release. Expect that this weekend. Um, other than that, thanks for watching.